Did you remember how to play? I'm so sorry about your mother. Thank you. I can't be your world. I'm dying. I'm terminal. Soon I'll be gone. Why are you doing this? Are you trying to make me cry? No, of course not. Mary, my mother, she spent a lot of time in China for work. It's been hard. Why does my own sister refuse to talk to me? Okay, people are mourning in there. I'm mourning too. Not just with her death, but not with this whole situation. First up, John, uh, Kyle, and Matt. Uh, thank you for your time. I know we're already busy. I know I am. So, so thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. And again, uh, really, you know, congratulations on a really interesting take on something that's really, you know, something that's difficult to talk about, but it's real and 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 something that I, I don't know if people enjoy when they see your take on on you know where the story goes. So I I think my first question has to go to to Carl and Matt and. What you know? Brought, what brought you to the party? What made you write the story? Taking into consideration the subject matter in hand, and obviously, I think we're thinking ahead of time in here because this is something to me, my personally, which is going to happen pretty soon, even though we don't believe in it. So, what, what you know, what, what motivated you to write the story? I mean, I think so. At the very beginning, we uh, knew we wanted to write a like smaller, manageable, independent film. Um, and we love movies that sort of unpack uh, as you watch them and maybe start off as something uh, that appears to be one thing and turns into something completely different. Um, but we also didn't want to write a, um, we didn't want to write a script or movie uh, that only hinged on a very specific twist. Um, so we sort of give the, the twist up 20-ish minutes into the movie, um, depending mm -hmm. on how well you're paying attention, I guess. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, at the, at the heart of it, the <clears throat> very beginning uh, sort of germ of the idea was that if you had something like a, an AI, um, could you convince it of an afterlife in order to sort of get it to shut itself down? So is this sort of like religious and, and technology sort of like, um, drama or or that was the impetus of it but it quickly sort of shifted into this sort of family drama um that had the like ai um angle to it but and and that that sort of you know afterlife t theme is somewhat still in there but it quickly just shifted into a sort of a family drama that just happens to sort of revolve around this issue of um artificial intelligence I, I want to go back to the back to the two of you hearts because I just mentioned something that that you know that's the first thing that I noticed. Twenty minutes into the movie, we get one of the one of those questions answers, right? Was that something you you put there, you know, since the beginning, or did did the whole process came about and then editing? You were like, we should put this here, or or or, or because I think that's the turning point where people are gonna go like, oh, wow, right. yeah, that is, that's the surprising part. And I get, I got it in the, the second I saw it. But I was like, it's so it was so early in the movie that I was like, maybe they, they should have waited. To, was that something from the get-go that you wanted to put in there? Uh, the exact moment at where the reveal happens sort of slid back and forth a couple of minutes, but it was always within that sort of realm. The the setting up who Ian is, mm -hmm. having the audience fall in love with him, hopefully, and feel like his grief, even though he doesn't really say much. Um, you know, and having this world be very cruel to him for some unknown reason, and then that beca that being revealed. So I, you know, there were there were definitely cuts where it came a little bit later, um, but for the most part, it was right. You know, it's sort of right in that position of the movie narratively. I know it surprised me when I first read the script. I didn't know what the big reveal was. I was reading a family drama and. That's how it was presented to me. So I, I know when I, I was like, oh, what? Oh my God, page turn. So 
Yo, John, uh, I have a lot of you now. You're a bit busy, which is congratulations. You've been really busy. I know you're a bit of a busy guy. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think you jump into one of my questions. So again, so let's. I'll, I'll go back to it with before you add you before this one. So, um, how how you know how how, how was your first reaction when you got into when you got the script and you got into this project? You know, the different subjects that they're talking about. You know, family dramas, afterlife, sci-fi, you know, AI, all different, all different subjects. So. What was your first reaction when you, you know, you got your project? Yeah, I mean, well, like I said, I was only given the idea that it was this family drama and it was about a story about, you know, a boy who lost his mom and, and all the things that come after that. And so, and, and that's literally how it was presented uh, in the breakdown. And, and so I think even in my first, you know, audition, I, I still didn't know the full reveal uh, until like I had discussions with, has our Kyle and Matt. And, uh, and so once I did find out, it made it so much more uh, impactful for the story that they were telling. Uh, and obviously the, the film asked such big questions. And so I got to explore those questions too, things that I've always wondered and uh, things that I didn't think about uh, that we should probably be thinking about uh, <laughs> the more we make technology. Um, and so I, I just got to play with these such, such big philosophical ideas in such an intimate setting, um, and it was really, really fun to explore. Um, back to you, Yoni. Um, what from Ian? What did you, uh, you know, what what did you adapt from yourself to his to the character? What did you learn maybe from him uh, personally? Uh, obviously, all the situations coming around, he finds him who he really is, and again, all through the story, trying to you know find. Uh, so how to you know how to feel, how to fit in in the whole situation? So yeah. what did you learn from him, or what did you put into the character that's from you? Yeah, I mean, I think a large part of the story is um, a story about someone coming to terms with themselves, and that's something I think we have all gone through or going through, and um, and I could definitely relate to that in in that sense. Um, in terms of uh, just the story of who Ian was and. Uh, I do like to think that we are similar in, in our um, our humor in some ways, but um, this character, uh, the one that we see at the very start of the film is, you know, super reserved and quiet and has this like quiet mm -hmm. intensity. I think I'm a little bit more loud and uh, out there. So it was really, really fun to like dive into that and like sink my teeth into like something that was um, uh, just had this quiet intensity. And um, I mean, I, I definitely uh, learned from him just, the grace in, in which you can uh, deal with grief. Uh, I am fortunate enough to not have had uh, such an intense experience, but I have had, you know, we've all gone through trauma and, and have uh, difficulties within families. And, and that was something I could relate to. I think that's something we can all really relate to. And that's why I think that the film is very impactful in the way that it is, because it does present itself to be um, very grounded. And so, I was able to sort of latch onto that, and um, and yeah, I, I think once he he finds out who he is, um, the way that he handles that was something that I look up to um, in his journey with uh, Olivia. So, I I, I want to talk to Hazard again one before Johnny did it, did something of, of your character or something on the story did you find it difficult to handle while of control? That because of the whole situation, everything that's all the different topics that are coming around. So, was, was there something particular that you just, you just found? Ah, this is tough. Um, it, physically, it was um, being very still uh, a lot <laughs> because I'm a very, I, I move a lot. But um, on a deeper level, um, uh, the whole aspect of um, asking the questions of is there an afterlife? Uh, that's something I think that's one of the big questions, right? And um, I have always struggled with, um, you know, religion and, and those big philosophical questions. And so um, really getting uh, in, in the trenches with um, those questions with Kyle and Matt and asking them like, what's your perception of this? What are we going for here? Um, because how do, you, how do you ask? Everyone has their own uh, avenue in approaching those questions, right? And so, how is our movie approaching those questions? Um, Cause I know me, I have a tough time uh, asking questions that have no definitive answer. So I think, uh, you know, a lot of that was difficult but really fun to like crack open. 
Yeah, oh, I think, oh, yeah. I mean, I, th I think the thing we knew when we were casting for Ian was that we needed someone who would charm the audience in the first couple of minutes uh, because without saying much of anything. And then would also need to be able to carry, uh, you know, a lot of the sort of philosophical heavy lifting in the scenes um, between Ian and Olivia. And, you know, we had seen John in, um, in something a year prior and just sort of put his name on a, a list of actors we liked. Um, and he, we brought him to our casting directors, Sonny and Meg, and uh, and from the very first time we he came in, it was it was obvious that it was going to be very easy for an audience to sort of fall in love with Ian because he does go through all of this stuff without a lot of context, and if you don't look at Ian and sympathize with him, and you know, then the movie in the first twenty minutes will fail. Um, and we really like, he's, uh, very modest in how he, he, he knows a lot of the answers to how to get through these scenes. He brought so much, um, you know, we had our own perspective, but one thing we really like as directors is for actors, as well as all of our other collaborators to bring their own ideas. Um, and he was so good in all of the moments of figuring out the difference between, you know, Ian and Ivan. Um, and and sort of how to parse what are very sort of heady questions. Um, I, I want to pick up on, on that answer. Is is is, the, is Ian the character or all the different characters in the movie is inspired by somebody or by some a type of experience? No, I don't think anyone specifically. Um, and again, the experience of loss in whatever form it takes not necessarily just of a parent but like you know that's those are all sort of we're all going to go through that so no we didn't none of the characters are modeled on it I mean there's maybe a couple of reasons we name characters the names of characters but other than like they're not based on specific individuals we just tried to present all we tried to present all of the sides of <laughs> whatever argument we were sort of examining, whether it's, uh, you know, is religion a useful thing for people? Could it be useful for some sort of conscious parallel? Um, you know, uh, what, how should Ian be treated? Um, you know, we, we were more specific about the types of characters uh, or people that are in it. Um, right. you the know, sort of the, archetypes that they represent yeah. and that, you know, and then the idea of showing, you know, the contrast between a person and a, a pet, in this instance, a dog, and, and then Ian's character as a parallel. And like, how, where do you want to rank all of those? Do you see them as equal or less than equal? And, and how do we sort of organize that as a society and morally so? And I think all of us are kind of all of the, you know, there's, there is no, I eventually we'll come to an answer as a society and uh, as to where a sort of conscious parallel would fall on the continuum of personhood. But I, I think there are perspectives that Lisa has that are, um, th legitimate. that are legitimate as well as Ian, as well as Olivia. And I think it's, those opinions are in all of us at any given moment. I, I, you know, I think when people see the movie, they're going to relate to, you know, to a bunch of the things that are just going on you know, from a personal perspective. I think that's why the question came about. It's more of a personal perspective of, of how the, the, the characters are. Um, again, and I was able to deep with diving into a little bit something personal, but you know, I do believe in the afterlife. So it's just something I know people are gonna relate to each situation in the individually. That's why the question was. So I think two more questions before I let the two of uh, you go. Uh, this one is for hard hearts. What what was I think the most difficult subject to touch into in the story. What found you found them more difficult to you know to to try to get that point across? I, I think there there are sort of two things. One is the technology of the movie and making sure that we weren't doing something that was so outlandish as to have all of the serious thinkers of that technology laugh at the movie. Um, and so we tried to using research that we did tried to sort of construct something that that the 
the sort of thought leaders and technologists would say like, sure, this is plausible. And yeah. then I think the other side is sort of what you touched on, right? Is the religion and the and and the uh, spirituality that we we touch on because we did we don't want it, it was just to, all we're trying to do is ask some questions. Mm -hmm. It's not to call out any one set of beliefs as right or wrong. Um, it's why in the movie it says holy book and not holy bible because we it was just to keep it as neutral as possible. To, as a way to ask a couple questions um, instead of someone feeling like their particular point of view is being called out in some negative way. You know, we definitely didn't want to and don't think we did that. I, I, I think the conversation, this is gonna be a conversation chat. I think it's gonna break down some eyes and then let some people loose and talk about different subjects. I think that, that came out perfectly. I, I, can, I can show you that. Uh, one point of question open for the for the three of you. Um, what do you expect people to take away from the film, or what? How do you expect them to 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 you know to uh, uh, to, you know, to uh, how to realize to how to what to talk to or how to open up about this all the different subjects? How do you how do you expect them to to react? Go ahead, John. I, well, I way. I personally I I what I got out of the film is my thoughtfulness in the way I talk about technology and treat technology. Um, you know, I think we've all have asked Siri some mean questions and what happens one day when she develops so far that, that she takes that to offense? I don't know, we don't know. Um, but I, I just hope that people are thinking about it, asking, asking these questions that uh, could exist in a future not so far away from where we are now. Yeah. I I hope that we inspire people to consider humanity broadly um, and that, you know, the only way to know how someone feels is to ask them and to, to sort of put judgment on someone like Ian in the movie because you believe what he's doing is purely performative, right? He's been programmed to do it, therefore he does it. Um, well, there are sort of two things to look at there. And, and, and that is one, how do you know for sure? Um, and isn't respect and um, sort of granting people uh, what they tell you to be true and respecting that. And two, even if in the case of Ian specifically, that consciousness is performative, how does poorly treating that reflect back on us as conscious beings. We all know the only answer we can ask, we can definitively answer is that all of us know from our own perspective that we are conscious and we are experiencing this stuff. You all could be zombies, Matt could be a zombie, but I definitely know. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we just sort of extend that courtesy to everybody else, I think we end up with a sort of more humane yeah. world. We're using the, the sort of um context and the theme of technology to explore these ideas but hope a hope we would have is that yet the conversation extends beyond just the sort of um limited topic of ai or technology and that like we our history is littered with us denying humanity to different groups of people and classes of people and so this is just another version of that it's just more I, it seems more approachable or or um, interesting because it is so like outside of human biology. But these themes are are you know the same thing, which is that like we're just constantly grappling with people and individuals trying to you know say that like I'm real, I matter, and I should be treated with respect and dignity. And so hopefully those conversations happen. It will definitely be a conversation start. That there's something that I can assure that the three of you that's going to happen. I, again, I want to thank uh, Hazard and, and Johnny. Thank you for the, the the time for the interview. And it's, again, congratulations on, a, on something really unique. That's how I, the way I saw it when I when I watched it when I finished watching it. Was like this is really unique. It's just something different. We haven't seen this before, or this take up was we hasn't has been done before. So I want to congratulate the three of you on on a really awesome job, and thank, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us.